Italian guys, second episode, myth busting, uh, different topic in today's uh, episode. I wanted to talk about um, cognitions, understandings that I've kind of that happened or got, I would say, reawakened inside my inner space. Regarding guru, the guru disciple relationship, and why. Uh, in this first episode, I want to talk a little bit more in detail about why. My understanding of why a disciple leaves the master. So I think that's a very interesting topic. Many of you would want to know, especially at this time, at least what I um, understand and see about that. So in today's episode, I'm going to watch this. So before that, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Why you leave the master? Okay, first thing first, I, I, I think many people are not on the same page when we talk about guru and master, especially those who, um, who cherish a lot of negative cognitions about this kind of happening. As far as I understand, and I might be wrong, but I don't think so. See, one thing Swamji clearly shared and that you can clearly see throughout, Sanatana Hindu Dharma is a guru-disciple relationship tradition. The Guru will always come and transfer the knowledge to disciple. Whether you are in a time where Guru is not available and you literally manifest Paramashiva, Murga, Ganesha, Devi to come and give you the blessing, the initiation or the darshan, or Guru is available and you find the Guru and then you get the experience like many others. And even avatars have their own Guru. Swamiji had many Gurus, Adi Shankaracharya had his Gurus, and uh, the avatars have gurus and like that this lineage is kept alive the transition of the knowledge is kept alive and the purity of the complete experience of enlightenment is kept alive so guru is as far as i understand the manifestation of the possibility of experiencing surrender and devotion beings who reached a certain maturity and they feel that surrendering and experiencing devotion is the highest experience in life and they want to experience that. That kind of desire gets fulfilled by the principle of Guru. When the Guru comes, Guru becomes the reality, the, the manifestation that you will use to experience surrender and devotion. So the very purpose of Guru is to surrender, as far as I understand. I don't think anybody who manifests Guru in their life, who are not interested in experiencing surrendering, I do not think these people can last around Guru. It's not possible, as far as I understand. Because some people are saying, you know, you know, uh, this uh, Swamiji and this cult and all these people, you know, all they want is he, they want you to forget who you are and they want you to surrender fully to him. And I mean, yes, that is the purpose. <laughs> purpose is to surrender. That is why Guru is there. So as far as I understand, that's my clarity about it. And I am interested in surrendering. That is why I came in the first place. Uh, now, you know, how intense you go in that thought current of surrendering depends of the intensity of the being, but the path of desire, desiring to experience surrendering um, is that path. Now, what is surrendering? As far as I understand, surrendering is, see my, my basic understanding before I took this lifestyle was, enlightenment is liberation, is true freedom. What is stopping me from enlightenment? My attachments, my attachments to my desires to remain, to hold on to few things in life, various things, whether it is a physical thing or an ideology or something, holding on to something which is responsible for my bondage. So my purpose is to detach myself from these things, to have the right understanding and the courage to detach myself from these things and experience a space where I am not attached 
yet I remain stable and powerful because before that, for instance, if I believe, um, I don't know, if I believe uh, I need to look good to exist. If I don't look good, I can't exist. So naturally, if that is the case, I will always spend time to make sure I look good because only when I look good, I feel that I exist. So I am attached to the idea of looking good in order to experience my existence. If at some point I feel this is a bondage because if I don't look good, I don't feel powerful. So that's a problem. I don't want that. I want to find a space where I'm powerful all the time. So naturally at this point, I would decide, oh yeah, I want to detach myself. So in the same way, few things in my life I had and I felt bondages from and I decided I want to experience liberation from that. So I started to walk in the direction and cherish the idea of experiencing surrendering. When you surrender to the Guru, of course it depends on the intensity at which you go in that path, in that direction of surrendering. And that varies from people to people. The Guru will guide you because it takes a lot of courage to surrender. Actually, surrendering is not possible outside of Guru. Um, I'll share why in another video, but in this video I want to uh, talk about something else. I guess maybe in the next video I'll talk about that. Um, when I walk towards surrendering, towards l freeing myself from these attachments, naturally I will be shaken because I have built myself in such a way that I only feel comfortable while being attached. If I stop being attached, naturally I'll be uncomfortable and I don't necessarily know how to engage with that space of feeling uncomfortable. Or I mean, I know, but I have kind of forgotten and it is a blind spot to me now. So that blind spot has to be exposed so that I can regain the responsibility and the powerfulness over the whole thing and claim my bliss, claim my enlightenment, claim my powerfulness again. So the Guru is that. The Guru is the, is the embodiment. It is the being which helps you to bring these blind spots into light. As the process is happening, you might be shaken. If you are shaken, then if you are intense in the idea of surrendering, you will increase the surrender because the surrender will allow you to continue to move even though you are shaken. And you will realize the more we do that, the more we realize that, oh, even if I'm shaken, I am still existing. So the idea that if I don't have this, I cannot exist is not true. So you start to experience yourself in a totally new dimension. You start to experience you as a consciousness. That nothing binds you, nothing outside can shake you because you are established in something that is beyond all the manifested universe, the pure consciousness. Um, so we, re we start to realize and have glimpses of that and establish ourselves more and more into that. And that's the purpose. But sometimes, when you walk and you start to detach yourself from some things, if you have other thought currents, other than the desire to surrender or anything, if you have other, other desires which come, they can come and interfere and at some point make you believe that walking the path of surrendering is no longer the best option, you should walk another path. And then you will drop the surrender and most of the time drop the Guru because the Guru is only there to allow you to do the surrender. If you drop the surrender, you will also drop the Guru. I guess to a certain extent, maybe not drop fully, maybe you will distance yourself initially, or if it's a drastic thing, you might just totally disconnect, which happens to some people. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. Why do people disconnect? As far as I understand, it's because of that. Because at some point they walk towards detaching themselves from things that they are strongly holding on to. And as they detach themselves, they don't have the right understanding. They are shaken, they become powerless, and at that moment, they decide not to vote for trusting the Guru and going the path of surrender. They decide to make another decision and they redirect their life otherwise. So, so yes, that is my understanding, my take of why people go through this. Um, oh, I wanted to share that with you guys because maybe some people uh, feel that, oh, why do people leave the Sangha? Um, I did have this thought some time back, but um, I guess while seeking into it, many experiences, responses and cognitions happened in me to a way that now I kind of, I don't, I don't feel I have this question, why do people leave the Guru anymore? I feel this question is not, at least as far as I'm aware right now, I don't see it in my inner space. And that's what I wanted to share in these few videos 
what, what cognitions happened, which allowed me to free myself from these questionings regarding why do people leave the master. So in this video, that's what I want to talk about. People leave the master, leave the master because at some point they are shaken and they decide that trusting the master and the path of surrendering is no longer the best option and they want to make another decision. And at that point, they distance themselves or they simply disconnect themselves from the guru. It's very unfortunate. And the, the worst thing is if you abuse, if you disconnect and abuse, the incompletion you generate towards the path of surrendering is such that even if in the future, once that powerlessness comes back, because it, that decision was made from powerlessness anyways, because you were shaken, when that powerlessness comes back, because you did not free yourself from the powerlessness unless you attend to it. If you can be powerless in one situation, you can be powerless in all situations. If you are able to generate powerlessness inside you, you can generate it at any time, at any moment. Because you still feel, if you are generating it in the first place, you are responsible for that. If you feel that generating powerlessness is a good idea and you generate powerlessness in any situation, then you still believe that being powerless is a good strategy for life, which is not. So whether you do it now and you disconnect yourself from Guru, you abuse Guru, then naturally at some point back, you will continue to experience that powerlessness. When that powerlessness comes back, you will not be able to understand to deal with it because most likely you will not have the right environment to support you and the right cognitions to overcome it or to discard it, I should say, not overcome, but discard it. The idea to come back towards the path of surrender will be very difficult because so many incompletions would have been there. So that is why um, Guru Droha is, is, is awful, it's terrible. It, it creates a gap in you so big that chances are you won't be able to bridge it and to complete it. And you will have to go through lives again of going through this whole thing again for you to have the ferociousness and the courage to complete that gap and go back into that path to, you know, go beyond all attachments. So yes, that's my video for today. I'll see you guys soon. Nidhyanam guys, hope, that's what else, uh, hope that this was useful. Next video, I'm going to talk about why I feel it's impossible to be successful without Guru. So I'll share that cognition in the next video. Nidhyanam.